Hi everyone, welcome back for day three of the Wonder Wife Marriage Group. I know over the past two days I've given you a lot of information. So what I wanted to do today was just give you a practical example of some of the tools that we've been speaking about. And once again, throughout this group, I'm going to really try to break it down and make it real and practical for you. So yesterday I had a personal experience that I really wanted to share with you guys and hopefully you can benefit from it. So one week ago, um, I was preparing for the Passover holiday and I was vigorously cleaning my car and getting rid of all of the crumbs and the junk that was in there. And at the time, I declared to my family in this grand statement, we will never be allowed to have food in my car again. Well, one week later, yesterday, <laughs> we decided that we were going to take a trip as a family to one of these drive through safaris where you stay in your car the whole time and the animals come up to the car. It's a lot of fun for the kids, a lot of fun for the adults too. Um, so we were planning this trip yesterday and my husband was like, what are we going to do? You know, we're not allowed to have food in the car anymore. And I said, oh, well, it's going to be really impossible to be trapped in the car with everyone for that long with driving there and then going through the whole safari and then driving back. We're going to need to have snacks. So I went ahead and I packed some food for everyone. Mistake number one. <laughs> but aside from that, um, so we got there and I went ahead and once we got there, we parked the car and the animals were like coming up to the car. And I offered my husband if he'd want a bowl of quinoa that I had packed. I packed this like quinoa with melted mozzarella cheese on it. So he said, sure. So I went ahead and I gave him a bowl of the quinoa. And before I knew it, one of the kids who was right next to him, looking at the animals, saw, oh, Abba has quinoa. And went and grabbed the quinoa from him. And you can imagine what happened, right? The quinoa went flying everywhere, right? It was on the ground. It was in between all the crevices of the seats. And if you know quinoa, it's like these teeny tiny pieces that are just impossible to clean, right? So I, of course, being the type A lady that I am, <laughs> was not happy and started saying things like, this is going to be impossible to clean. There's quinoa everywhere. I'm so upset with everyone. We're never allowed to do this again. It was out of control. And of course, I stopped myself and thought about how just earlier that day, I had been sharing with all of you the importance of not over exaggerating, not generalizing, being careful about the type of language that comes out of my mouth, right? So saying in the first place a week ago, a statement like you're never allowed to have food in my car again, and then making statements yesterday saying it's everywhere, which is not true. It wasn't everywhere. It wasn't in the back of the car. It was just in the front of the car. It's impossible to get the quinoa out. No, it's very difficult to get it out, but it's not impossible to get it out. That was blowing things out of proportion. And of course, my energy level, um, my negative energy was then infused into everybody who was in that car with me. So I stopped and I said, first of all, this is what I need from you right now. I am feeling anxious right now. I am feeling nervous about how much work this is going to be for me to clean up when I get home. Mike, my husband, what I need from you in this moment to help me feel safe and secure is for you to tell me that I don't need to worry. When we get home, you are going to help me clean this up. That's what will help me feel better. And sure enough, that's what he did. And then I apologized. And I said, I'm sorry, you guys are all more important to me than this quinoa. And my connection with you is more important than the mess in this car. And from there, we were able to repair the situation and move forward. So why am I sharing this story with you? First of all, I think it really puts into practice, into reality for us, a picture of what happens when we break these rules. Maybe some of you can relate to this situation or have experienced something like this similarly in your own experience. But also I wanted to make the point that first of all, just because I'm giving this class, it doesn't mean I'm like the perfect wife and I keep my cool all the time. No, that's not, that's not what this is about. We're all put in trying and testing situations. It's a matter of how do we repair those situations? How do we move forward? You know, this could have been a big blowout situation, which could have ruined the trip and had long-term ramifications. But instead, based on the choices that I made and using the tools that I've learned, about how to communicate in an appropriate and in a proper um, conducive way and productive way, this situation was repaired within a minute of like, within a moment of five minutes, let's say, 
and we were able to move on and stay connected and have an amazing time. So I hope that you guys um, can hopefully, you know, learn from the story and be able to apply it to your own lives. Also, I'm asking that you share your success stories with me. I don't see this story as a failure of mine. I see it as a huge success because I was able to take the tools to repair the situation. So I would love to hear your success stories. Over the next two days, we're going to have the Passover holiday where I'm not going to be um, signing on and sending you guys messages. I would love to hear from you after the holiday to be tuned in to look for opportunities where you can overcome, where you can apply these tools that we've been speaking about and to be able to say like, yes, I'm a victor. <laughs> and to share that with me, I would love to hear it. And I'd love to be able to share it with the group as well with your permission. All right, wishing you all a happy holiday and a chag sameach.